Everybody, it's Joe at the workbench again with part two of a series of videos that started in the last video and that will end with you guys being able to make little minis like you see right here, like this or this. A uh, little wizard. You could use them in any games, little priest that you could use in whatever games that you want. I'm going to cover how to make minis like this. Cool? But before I do, I'm going to announce a contest that I'm going to call my super transparent attempt to boost Joe's online effect. Or Dab Joe for short. Uh, Alright. The way Stab Joe is going to work is you go to facebook.com slash Joe's 3D Workbench. URL at the bottom of this video. You see it right there? Change the URL for today. And then like the post for Stab Joe and then make a comment on that post about what you would like me to make you as a 3D printed mini similar to these guys. And then go find another post on Facebook Joe's 3D Workbench like that one and make a comment there. Any comment will do. Preferably something intelligent and relevant. But whatever will do. Um, and then on a couple of weeks, February 20th, uh, on that video I will randomly choose a comment and I will make that mini for the winner. And the winner will get that mini shipped to them I will probably use Make XYZ if you're too far away and have somebody locally print it and ship it to you at my expense for you, okay? And then that model will be uploaded to you, imagine, for other people to use and enjoy and do whatever they want with. So there you go. There's the contest. Like two posts. Comment on two posts on Joe's 3 Workman. Just make sure one of them is what you want me to make for you and the winner will get that made for them. Cool? Excellent. Hopefully this way I can boost my online presence and you get to stab Joe. If this is successful, you guys may get to stab Joe again in the future. But let's get back on to the, on to the uh, lecture at hand. Let's clear these guys. Uh, yeah, let's just clear these guys out. So last time we talked about the skin modifier. The skin modifier is really cool. The skin modifier allows you to take a shape like this, and then when you apply the skin modifier to it, all of the lines of the shape become tubes, and you can set how thick those tubes are in the edit menu uh, here in the properties or by hitting Control A and making them thicker or thinner. But it also has an additional function here in the create armature that I will talk about at, when we get to the appropriate point. So here's how we're going to do. First thing we're going to do is we're going to decide how big our mini is. And we want something to be about, uh, depend, depending on the scale that you work with, 28 to 36 uh, millimeters. The larger, the easier it is to work with. So for this experiment, I'm going to do 36. So here's what I'm going to do. I got a tape plane. I'm going to scale it up. I'm going to move it in the Z uh, 36, 36 millimeters. And then I'm going to change it to wireframe mode. That way it's not actually in the way of anything while everything else is still just transparent. But that way I can see that's how tall my mini is going to be. Okay. Next, I'm going to take this plane object that I made. I'm going to delete all uh, let me turn off that skid modifier for just a second. I'm going to delete all but one point, there are two points. Uh, in fact, you know what, I'm going to delete all but one point. And then I'm going to move that one point up. Using E to extrude, I create another line, but I just want to move it straight into Z. And I'm going to create a stick figure, literally a stick figure. Now I'm going to create a bone in here for the spine, come over here for the hips and then go down to the leg and knee. Um, I want this to be on zero, so I might want these to be a little bit higher. 
And, you know, you should study proportions and things like that, but if you don't just, you know, do your best. Use reference images. I like reference images. Um, whatever. It's hard to think and do this, at, or, or do this and talk at the same time. Hand is just going to be one bone. Okay? I'm not going to worry about making a fancy hand with lots of bones. I could. I'm not going to. In fact, you know what? There's another modifier that I oftentimes use. This is not the best way to make something, but this is perhaps the easiest and most comprehensible. But I am going to do something. I am going to make something that would be hard to do with any other modifier. I am going to make a Goro-like character with four arms. There we go. Now there's justification for using this skin modifier. And the top goes up to about there. Alright. I think that's probably good. His, he seems a little bit short in the hips. So I'm going to make him just a little bit taller in the hips. Spread his legs out maybe a bit more. Whoops. Missed one. Ah, why are you giving me such a hard time, guy? It's like you don't want to be made. Alright, there we go. Uh, should I take these guys and turn them up a little bit? Yeah, I'm going to have to turn them up a little bit. And I actually want... Yeah, I'm going to show you a different method. I'm going to take this up to the top, and oh, look at that. The neck is just one, the whole head. I would like another joint in there, so I'm going to grab these two and hit subdivide over here. Boom, there's another point. And then if I hit GG to keep it moving along, there we go. There's the neck and head. Now i got to make it three-dimensional. Uh, so, let's see. Oh, and I only did the one side, so let me add the, the mirror modifier to it right now mirror it along the X. I want that to be first and I want to see it while I'm editing. Ta-da! Mirror modifier makes it. Looks kind of like a spider but trust me, when we skin it, it'll look really good. Uh, you guys trust me, right? Yeah. There we go. Okay, let's make this three-dimensional. One way we're going to do that is to move the Y, move the head out and the Y a little bit. It, it, people's neck and head, it kind of goes forward, right? Okay, so that's the way, why we're doing that. Uh, we're going to move that just a little bit back. Hips rock just a little bit forward, but maybe not that much. Uh, we're going to pull those knees forward. Hey, he's looking good now. Let's move those elbows backwards and the hands forwards. Doesn't need to be super complex. Doesn't need to be uh, super detailed. We're going to fix detailed later, and now let's turn that skin modifier back on. And now, it really looks like a spider, so we're going to have to come in here. I want nothing to be less than 2 millimeters, so I'm going to increase my radius to 1 all the way around. Okay. Notice we got... This, this middle part here is seriously going to give us some trouble. The best thing to do here is to take the points... Into, we have the shoulders and the chest mark those suckers, excuse me, as loose, and that works much better. You, are you loose? Okay. I think I'm still going to need to hit Control A and beef up that line a little bit so we got a bit of a chest there. And this is Goro, so he's got massive shoulders. So let's beef that up. He's also got massive forearms. And we'll beef up the hand a little bit. Now, you're looking at this and going, that looks absolutely nothing like Goro. I'm going to mark this loose, too, see what that does. Yeah, I like that. And you're correct. It really doesn't. It looks like, well, I don't know what it looks like, but it looks like garbage. However, it will look more like Goro in the next lesson. Right now, we're going for the rough shape. Now, you can hit, when you hit Control a move in only the Y or the X, and you can play with that to see. Uh, control a X. There we go. See if you can make it look a little bit more like what we're looking for. 
making it a bit more rectangular in the slices. Uh, ooh, ooh, I don't like that at all. What happened there? I made that too big. That's what happened. Slim that down a little bit. Uh, let's beef those shoulders up a little bit. Man, it's really not loving this, uh, this pinch that I got going on here. And I should worry about that. But you know what? I'm going to worry about it next time. I'm not going to worry about it this time. Beef up those arms a little bit. Let's apply a subdivision surface modifier to this. Smooth her out a little bit. Now, we learned last time that the skin modifier can be kind of fiddly. Uh, that it can really kind of mess you up. And that's still true, you know. Uh, nothing's changed since last time. Um, so if you're seeing nasty things in the subdivision surface modifier, uh, you have to sometimes move things around and fiddle with it a little bit and mark things as loose and mark things as not loose and things like that. I just moved that a little bit into Y to fix it. Still not sold on what we got going on here. I don't know. Maybe it's good. Okay. For now, we're going to call that good. Let's work on the feet just a little bit. Control A, only in the Y. X and Y kind of become relative here. Oh, I see what happened. I wasn't selecting the whole foot. Control A in the Y. There we go. Let's just beef up that ankle just a little bit. No, let's not. Let's slim down just a little bit. This is called fiddling. This is called playing with it until it looks right. And there we go. There's our Goro standing as tall as we want him to. Kind of. Not really. Almost looks nothing like Goro whatsoever. However, we're going to fix that in the next video. In the next video, I'm going to show you a little bit about sculpting and how to turn this into a really cool mesh. Let's increase the divisions on that. Yeah, that didn't help at all. You also might notice that it's not symmetrical, and that's annoying. Uh, oh, there's Y. There's the root. Let's move the root over here. Mark that guy as the root. Now that looks much better. Everything goes out from the middle the way that marking the root is. So there we go. Mark the root. Uh, now we've got something that looks almost nothing entirely like Goro. But... We're not done yet. What I want you to do now is exit edit mode and at this point create an armature. Now this is going to mess stuff up so you know, I think first I'm going to apply that modifier. Apply the mirror modifier, create the armature. All of those lines that you made, that stick figure, are now bones and they're marked. So let's, where's this armature? There it is. If we go into pose mode you can move things around and look at how the skin moves with it. So if you, we can now pose Goro and, and do whatever we want with him and make him look however we want. We now have a skinnable armature. Whoop, let's go back to this. And I'm just hitting G to move things around. There we go. Here, let's, let's, we're probably gonna end up doing a pose a little bit like this. There we go. And rotate it this way. And move it down that way. And let's do, let's move this up and that down. Rotate it, rotate that. Uh, I'm not quite sure, we're working on it. Ro let's rotate those shoulders up and the arm down, whoops. There we go. There's our Goro pose. Er, he's he's awesome and manly and forearmed. Yeah. Did I mention it's Goro from Mortal Kombat? I forgot to mention that. Nevertheless, there we go. We can pose him, and we can make him. I don't know. Look left or right or 
we can make them look however we want. If you hit R twice, it does also something pretty darn cool too. So there we go. We've got our Goro character modeled. Now, unless you are printing something really, really small, this isn't gonna, people are gonna look at this and go, that looks absolutely nothing like Goro. So we need to do more to it. And for that, you're gonna have to wait till next week when we will take this character and use sculpting to create a really cool character. All of this again is covered in 3D printing blueprints, chapter seven, where I go over the teddy bear, but we're doing a different project in this one because I can't reuse those projects. So thank you guys for watching. I hope that you guys will take the opportunity to stab Joe. Hmm. And the winner, of course, will get their idea made into a 3D printed miniature uh, in front of here for the whole world to see. So the next part, we will add detail to our Goro character. And I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank you guys for subscribing. I want to thank you guys for sharing this with other people. I hope that this has inspired somebody to make something cool. And if it does, share that with others and share that with me. I'd love to hear about the cool things that you're doing. You can contact me at 3D or Joe's 3D Workbench at blogspot.com. I have a contact form there. Uh, you can contact me on the Facebook page. I respond to those as well. Don't remain quiet. Or, oh, yeah, there are comments on this video. Don't remain quiet. Let me know what you want to see, if you have any suggestions for things that you want me to cover in future videos. And if you want me to make a miniature for you, your best way to do that is to stab Joe. Make it happen, guys. And thank you very much for watching. Oh, awkward pause as I find the stop button. Found it.